Thanks for tuning in to Shooty School. In this video, we'll be learning about the Surge tab in Easy Drummer 2. If you're looking for a beginner's video, I recommend watching the Easy Guide to Easy Drummer 2 video first, because here I assume you've already watched my previous videos in this advanced series, so there's no need for an introduction or specifications. I'll link to those videos in the description below, and do check out my channel Shooty School for more Easy Drummer 2 tutorials. Let's get started. The Search tab in Easy Drummer 2 is a sophisticated search engine that will search through your multiple Easy Drummer expansion packs, MIDI packs, superior MIDI files, and your Easy Drummer 2 MIDI files all at the same time using keywords that you engage or disengage. First, let's focus on the main area in the middle here with all the listed MIDI files. This list is the results of your search. And since we didn't define any criteria in the panels above, it is showing every tune track MIDI file that I own. And since I have hundreds or thousands of files in this list, the first column over here on the left might come in real handy with remembering which files I like. Remember, the main purpose of this window we're working in is to find drum beats that we want to work with, whether it be build a song below in the song track or to find beats we can further manipulate and edit. Let's click on the play icon on one of the files to audition it. More details on auditioning files available in my advanced browser video on my channel. Let's say we like this beat, but we're going to spend more time searching for more beats we like. We may want to hit the star button to the left of the play icon in the star column here before we continue. It illuminates yellow. Let's select a few more randomly down here. I'm scrolling with my mouse wheel. Now let's pretend this is the extent of our search for drum beats. Let's look at our column header and select the star above the star column. And voila, here's the MIDI files we've selected and can now work with. Drag them to your song track or right click and send them wherever you want to go as discussed in my advanced browser video. One thing to note about the star column and workflow is if I quit Easy Drummer right now and didn't save my work and then relaunched Easy Drummer, went back to the search tab and selected the star on the column header, you'll see that all of our starred beats are still there. It doesn't matter if you save your Easy Drummer project or not. The program remembers what happens in the star column. And you literally have to click on the star next to every file to make it not sort in that star column anymore, like this. This is a great feature except the last part here, at least for me. I'd love to see Easy Drummer 2 only save the star column to a specific Easy Drummer project file, not permanently in the program, but now we know. The next column is the name column. Keep in mind that tune track MIDI files often share the same name, like verse 1 for example. If you click the name title in the column header, you will sort the MIDI files in ascending alphabetical order. If you click on it a second time, you'll sort in descending alphabetical order. And if you click it a third time, it will disengage sorting of the name column. I'm not positive how it's listing the MIDI files at this stage, possibly by time signature at this point. Either way, clicking the name column again will re-engage it sorting alphabetically. Sorting by family is referring to the orange titles in the browser tab. Let me right click on this file that is from the Radio Rock family and select Show in Browser. You can see that the family name is referring to the orange text that the MIDI folders are grouped into. You can select that family text in the column header to sort ascendingly, descendingly alphabetically, or disengage sorting, just like the last column and every column to follow. The next column is intensity. Another great way to describe this would be velocity. This means how hard the drummer was hitting the drums, not necessarily volume and they have a small graph indicating the intensity of each file in which you can sort by clicking on the intensity title in the column header. I'd like to put a disclaimer in so I'm not speaking for tune track personally, but to me intensity means velocity. If you look at the little intensity gauges, the more left they are, the less intense they are, the more right they are, the more intense they are. To me, that relates directly to velocity, but also a common attribute is the more intense the beat is, the busier the beat is. The less intense, the less busy it is. So you're gonna have to use your own opinion to decide what intensity is. Regardless, if you hear a beat you like but the intensity is too high or low, you can adjust this velocity slider before dragging the file to the song track to readjust its velocity, which I interpret as intensity. 
If you interpret intensity being less busy or more busy, that can also be edited as well in the edit play style function, which is covered in a different video on my channel. Now the next column is the power hand. As you can see, it just shows the name of an instrument from the drum kit. Power hand typically means what the drummer's dominant hand is playing the most. Usually the hand that plays the most is typically on the hi-hat and cymbals, but never limited to that. Let's play a few as an example. There's a hi-hat closed. There's a crash. And there's toms. Feel free to sort alphabetically in the column header. The next column is time signature, so you can find specific grooves in 2-4, 3-4, 4-4, 6-8, and 12-8, at least with the Easy Drummer 2 core library. If you drag a MIDI file to the song track and there's no other MIDI blocks on the song track, Easy Drummer 2 will adopt its project time signature to match the file you just dropped in the song track. Like this. The next column bar is simply the duration of the MIDI file counted in bars or measures. Sort in the column header from longest to shortest. Here's a file with one beat or a quarter of a measure. And here's one with hundreds of measures. It's a whole song. Typically, you'll be working with beats that are one to eight measures in length though. The next column is tempo. And it just represents what tempo the beat was recorded at or might sound best at. If you look in the transport, the tempo is 120 by default. If I audition this file right here or drag it into the song track, it will play back at 120 BPMs. So regardless of what tempo it says in this column, when you audition a file in this window, it will be at 120 or whatever is specified in the transport tempo box. Now, if you toggle this preview original tempo button, you will hear the audition file at the tempo in the tempo column, like this. Also, if you drag a MIDI file while the preview original tempo button is activated and it's the first MIDI block to go into the song track, the project tempo will inherit the tempo of the file you just dropped, like this. Now, if you right click on the column header, you'll reveal a menu. What is selected here is what can be sorted in the header column. Let's check the other three things, library, resolution, and instrument. Take note, where you right click on the header column is where the new sort option will appear. You can also put your mouse in between the titles on the header column and see your cursor change. So you can click, hold, and readjust the column's width. You can also drag and drop entire columns to reorder them. There's also a scroll bar here at the bottom of the search window. So the new column resolution, I assume it means how much the power hand is playing or maybe it can give you a vibe of how busy the beat is, but that's not entirely accurate. One thing this column is handy for though, is if you scroll down and watch the resolution column, you can see what beats are based off of triplets. So that's a plus. The column instrument or number instrument means how many different drums were played throughout the MIDI file. We can sort and see only a single instrument. Sort again for a beat that utilizes the majority of the kit. And the library column simply means what tune track product you're previewing which will grow depending on how many expansion packs and MIDI packs you have purchased. Only two libraries come with the core of Easy Drummer 2. I'll right click on the header column and click reset to default so it looks cleaner. Lastly, about auditioning MIDI files. You can click on the tempo to hear different tempo variations in combination with the velocity slider to manipulate your stock beats as covered in my advanced browser video. Now that we know how to audition and navigate the main window, Let's take a look at how to populate this window. I will cover this tap to find feature in another video, which is on my channel, or watch it right after this one. To the right of the tap to find feature are the sorting columns. The column header can be dragged to resort the columns and you can right click on it to reveal more sorting options. With that said, this menu icon over here is another way to add or remove columns from both the sorting columns and the search results window below. 
In the library panel are all the TuneTrack libraries that you own. You'll see just two options if you only have Easy Drummer 2. Below on my screen, you'll also see my custom shooty kit, along with my user MIDI, which was created and discussed in my advanced browser video. But you can look in the main menu, go to settings, and select MIDI libraries, and know that whatever has an orange check mark here, will also become available in your search results on your search tab. Now let's start searching. Here, all you have to do is click on any criteria, called filters, in any column, and the search results window will begin to repopulate to only show you MIDI files that relate to what you've selected. The more filters you select, the less results will appear in the window below. What's really cool is you can click on more than one filter per column and expand your search even more. Also, you can right click on a filter and tell Easy Drummer 2 what you're not looking for by clicking on the exclude option, making the filter appear red in color. Right click again and select don't exclude to make that filter an option again. To deactivate your active filter, just click on them a second time and when you're ready to start from scratch, click on the number of the total filters area. The number represents how many filters are active. Now we've reset all the filters. And now I could start dragging parts I like to the song track or send them to Tap the Find, Edit Play Style, or Song Creator, which are covered in other videos on my channel. But real quick, if you drag a MIDI file to the drop zone of the Tap to Find feature, it will repopulate your search results window with similar beats to the one you dragged and dropped just now. And looking at the new matching column, will show you how accurately that file is similar to your original beat. The results are similar. It's pretty cool. I'll hit the orange X button to clear that MIDI drop zone. Lastly, up at the top here are two arrows that will help you step forward and backwards through your selections of filters. It could come in handy. Watch the filter columns as I step backwards with my work. At this point, I could also use the other arrow to step forward through my work and continue where I left off. And over here, the Show Web Shop MIDI button will connect you to the TuneTrack servers and let you audition beats you have not yet purchased. This could take some time, but a progress graphic and some interactive text will let you know it's working on it. And when it's ready, we'll see the library column repopulate in which you can click on which library you do not yet own and add it to the search results, which are indicated by the blue dot. And now next to our star column is a new column of a blue world magnifying glass that will link you to the product page on ToonTrack's site. So if you like the beat that you've auditioned enough to purchase it, you just click on the blue world like magnifying glass. As you can see, I can't drag these files to my song track or work with the files when I right click on them. These are only for auditioning purposes only. Moving on, since I've right clicked on a web MIDI shop file, I do see the search with tabs option. Clicking on this will deselect and reselect your filters in the sorting columns that relate to the beat. Chances are you only get results that need to be purchased in this specific case. But while we're talking about it, if you go to the browser page and find a beat you like, you can right click and select search with tags of the beat you already own. And it will open your search tab with the appropriate filters pre-selected so you can find similar beats like this. If I close Easy Drummer 2 without saving, my sorting columns and search results will not be saved. So save your project file if you want to remember what filters you were working with. If you have no filter selected and you change the sorting in the results area, it may take a while for the list to repopulate when you have a ton of MIDI files in Easy Drummer 2. Real quick to recap workflow, I'll sort the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Vintage Library. I'm looking for metal beats. I don't want to hear any fills right now, no swing beats, and no endings. I want to hear all play styles and I don't want any ride driven beats. I want 4-4, four, four, but as you can see from the filters I've selected so far, only 4-4 four, is left over, so no need to select it. I'll hit preview tempo to hear the beats at their intended tempos. I like this. This will be the first beat for my song track. 
Since I have the preview original tempo button pressed in, I'll drag my first MIDI file to the song track and the time signature and original tempo, as you can see by the transport, will update the project settings, since it's the first beat to hit the song track. Thanks for letting me try to teach you about the Surge tab today. If you're still feeling motivated, then continue on to watch one of my next Advanced with Easy Drummer 2 videos. If you're feeling burnt out, take a break or even play with Easy Drummer 2 on your own and come back to my channel when you're feeling refreshed. If you learned something from this search tab video, please like and subscribe. Comments and corrections are always welcome below. Thanks for tuning in and rock on.